Sir Philip Sidney, <clears throat> he was definitely an individual that the Queen liked to have around. Um, if you were at court was the term, come to court. Um, you want to, you know, you were just there for the, for the pleasure of, the, of your company, um, for your intelligence, maybe skills, um, maybe uh, uh, affairs, something. Um, but she was uh, intrigued by this individual because he had a lot of the same likes and, and abilities that, that she liked. Um, you know, talk about how he was a refined aristocrat. Uh, behavior made him for the time a particular favor, favorite of Queen Elizabeth. You know, he was a statesman, he was a brave soldier, um, a gifted writer. That term, Renaissance man, that we talked about with regards to, um, what was that guy's name? Rally. Um, you know, one of her suspected lovers, you know, from the pastorals previously. Um, we find out how he is such a great gentleman. Look at how he died, you know, wounded by a musket shot. It shattered his thigh bone. Even in this de debilitating state, Sidney was the picture of genti gentility. Excuse me, I can't read. Uh, just as he was about to take a drink, he saw a soldier nearby who was dying and offered his drink to the man saying, Thy necessity is greater than mine. So he's shot, you know, he could survive unless he probably did, except for, uh, you know, infection possibly. But saw somebody dying and gave his water to that individual. You know, a last parched breath, you know, so you're not dehydrated when you die or something. I don't know. But uh, he was sharing, and he, just a very nice uh, individual, um, an upstanding citizen. Um, the lit term apostrophe, uh, like I said, if this is not on your lit term list, it should be. Um, you know, it's when a writer addresses an absent person, or in most of our situations, an inanimate object, maybe even an idea. But it's something that cannot speak back to you. It can be something, you know, I could just be lost in thought and, oh, pencil, why did you make me fail that test the other day? I was in love with you, but not in, yeah, I, I don't know. You, you don't expect a conversation back, okay? Apostrophes are things that are very simple to identify. However, people miss them on final exams because they don't study, okay? You will be tested on this next week, final exam, so make sure you understand what an apostrophe is. I'm not talking about the little, little mark at the top, okay? Um, so as we go through these two poems here uh, on the next couple pages, Sonnet 31 and 39, um, I'd like for you to be able to identify what the, um, you know, what the uh, uh, apostrophe is, but also those ideals of love and the, the lover who isn't getting that, uh, that love reciprocated back. Um, the building background of this is very interesting, uh, particularly, on the heel, particularly on the heels of what I was telling you about uh, you know, the Shakespeare in Love uh, reference uh, from previous um, discussions. And uh, he was in love, uh, where is it at? Uh, da, 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 da. It's from a work called the, the Astrophel and Stella. The speaker is called Astrophel from the Greek for star lover. His beloved is called Stella from the Latin for star. A star is a beautiful, bright, fascinating, and Astrophel is the admirer of that star. Now, what's interesting is that the real Stella was somebody named Penelope Devereux, to whom Sidney was briefly engaged. Though the engagement was broken off and Devereux's family required her to marry somebody else, his love for her was written out in these, in these collected works. And so while their life is fractured and never going to be in love with each other again, maybe they hold on to some of that, that love. But it's that snapshot of immortality. Their love was immortalized in these particular poems. So that's kind of neat, kind of a, a romantic uh, um, notion to, to think about. Um, so even though they didn't get to experience their love for, their, for generations and for, well not generations, but for the rest of their life, um, it will go on for forever here. Um, so on Sonnet 31, Listen to the selection. Sonnet 31 from Astrophel and Stella by Sir Philip Sidney. With how sad steps, O moon, thou climbest the skies! How silently, and with how wan a face! What may it be that even in heavenly place that busy archer his sharp arrows tries? Sure, if that long with love acquainted eyes can judge of love, thou feelest a lover's case. I read it in thy looks, thy languished grace. To me that feel the like thy state descries. Then even of fellowship, O moon, tell me, Is constant love deemed there but want of wit? Are beauties there as proud as here they be?
Do they above love to be loved, and yet those lovers scorn whom that love doth possess? Do they call virtue there ungratefulness? Sonnet 31 from Astrophel and Stella. Who is the apostrophe? Or what is the apostrophe? To whom is the speaker addressing and he does not realistically expect to be spoken back to? The moon. I think you will find out that a lot of times, oh, whatever, when you address it, oh, something, that is an apostrophe. Um, we will see in the next example that it's not even a, a, you know, it's not even a person or a thing. It's more of a, um, you know, an abstract thought or notion. And we'll talk about that one in a little bit. Um, but he's addressing the moon. Oh, with how sad steps, O oh moon, thou climbest the sky. Um, if you've ever seen a time-lapse video of a sunrise or a moon rise, I guess, throughout its cycle, you know, just slowly, you know, fast, da -da 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 it just goes throughout the sky. You know, and then you see the clouds go flying by and the stars come out and go away. You know, that moon... If you're sitting there watching it for a long time, it's barely noticeable that that thing is even moving. So with how, with how sad steps, O oh moon, thou climbest the sky, how silently and with a wan of face, so with a pale face, what may it be that even in a heavenly place that busy archer, his sharp arrow tries? So why are you so sad and such pale of a face and going so slow and, oh, did the little Cupid archer hit you with an arrow up there? Are you so miserable about love up there in such a beautiful heavenly place? Are you as miserable as I am down here? Um, and you can almost imagine it and see this individual just on a walk at night just stopping and looking and in a movie more than in, in real life probably and then addressing the moon. And so it's something very similar here. Um, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. You know, tell me, line a line, right up to the blue. Tell me, O oh moon, is constant love deemed there but want of wit? Are beauties there as proud as here they be? Do they above love to be loved, and yet those lovers scorn whom that love doth possess? So do they want, do women up there, and obviously women aren't up there, but do women up there want to be loved more than anything else? but then scorn the people that actually love them? Do you see how miserable I am here, O oh moon? And are you as miserable up there, as slow as you're going? And imagine, you know, the moon talking about a pale face. Is there a face on the moon? Ah, it looks like there is. They call it the man on the moon. And so he actually has a face that he might be talking to. Necessarily physically talking, but looking at oh, the, oh, why do you look so sad? Because it doesn't look like a, a happy face up there. It just kind of looks like a, a void of emotion. And so he adds or projects his laments about love and his horrible, you know, experiences. And he thinks, huh, you must have that same issue up there. Look at you. You're not even smiling. You're slowly going about and you're all pale and all. Are you miserable up there like I am here? And so we see that, that unrequited love, um, especially from a woman who wants to be loved. And so I'm loving her, but she scorns me and rejects me. That doesn't make sense to me and I get upset about it. But yet I don't stop because I keep going. Nowadays we might consider that stalking in some degree. I don't know. I think, uh, I think that might have changed a bit. Sonnet 39. Um, this one is uh, uh, more of an abstract notion. You will understand, I think, right off the bat what or to whom or it or that notion that he is addressing. But why is he addressing that? What is he hoping to obtain is what I want you to look for. And why? Listen to the selection. Sonnet 39 from Astrophel and Stella by Sir Philip Sidney. Come sleep. Oh, sleep, the certain knot of peace, the baiting place of wit, the balm of woe, the poor man's wealth, the prisoner's release, the indifferent judge between the high and low, with shield of proof, shield me from out the prease of those fierce darts despair at me doth throw. Oh, make in me those civil wars to cease. I will good tribute pay if thou do so. Take thou of me smooth pillows, 
Sweetest bed, a chamber deaf to noise and blind to light, a rosy garland and a weary head. And if these things, as being thine by right, move not thy heavy grace, thou shalt in me, livelier than elsewhere, Stella's image see. So he is addressing, O oh, sleep. And you've all had that night experience before where you just can't sleep for whatever reason. Um, maybe Christmas is around the corner. Maybe there's that test first thing in the morning. Maybe you have to see your friend tomorrow and you had a falling out the night before and so you're not wanting to go to sleep. Okay? This individual wants to go to sleep. Why? Think about that for a moment. <coughs> Go away. I'm in class. Who is it? Don't know. Don't care. <coughs> then they will come and get me. Um, you guys are more important. And Sonnet 39 is more important. So, oh, sleep. What does he hope to see? <coughs> Stella's image. So this is an individual that wants to go to sleep so he can see Stella. He can see her face. And he's struggling to fall asleep. Okay? Um, if you look up there, and there are some great, uh, great descriptions about sleep up there. Talking about, uh, you know, sleep is the balm of woe. The balm of woe is the balm is the, you know what one would you know put on something to make it better. So when you have woe, sleep is the balm of woe. For example, the poor man's wealth. Because when a poor man dreams, they can be the richest person in the world. So sleep is a is a savior for for those individuals. What about the next one? The prisoner's release. Do you see how sleep could be the prisoner's release? Because if you're serving life sentences back to back and there's no chance of parole, you ain't getting out of that cell for the rest of your life. Maybe an hour a day for, you know, for, for yard. But you are there. But when you're asleep, you can go anywhere you want. It's kind of like reading Rainbow. Let your imagination take you wherever you want to go. Okay? Um, and so I like these descriptions. The poor man's wealth, the prisoner's release. Um, you know, the indifferent judge between the high and the low. Um, you know, I will good pay if thou do so. Take thou of me smooth pillows, sweetest bed, a chamber, deaf to noise and blind to light, a rosy garland. So all of these things that you would want to sleep, he has them, but he can't sleep. He has a smooth pillow. He has the sweetest bed. He has a chamber, deaf to noise and blind to light. So pitch black, quiet, shouldn't have any problem falling asleep. But yet he does. And I will, get, I will sleep on the floor if I could sleep. I'm struggling. I can't. Now, what's his motivation to see the image? And we could look at this in a couple things, a couple ways, I guess. One is maybe this woman, Stella, is not giving him the time of day. Okay? Completely ignoring him. It has almost nothing to do with him. But in his dream, she's a little bit more receptive, isn't she? Maybe they're separated. Maybe they're, they're just, I took her home after dinner and now I'm back at home and I just miss her so much and I just, I need to go to sleep so that I can, I can see her pretty face again because we don't have, you know, pictures and, and all of these things. So you can look at the, the end game to be whatever you want it to be. Um, you know, why does he want to, well, he wants to see your image. For what reason? It, he's in love with this woman. Okay. Hmm? No, that's all right. You got excited? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do too. Sonnet 39. Uh, but he's in love with this woman and sleep is, is eluding him. And he needs that sleep. 